Let's solve the 2018 multiple choice questions from the British Physics Olympiad Intermediate Challenge for GCSE students. Just a little note that these are not official solutions and please visit the website for the official solution and the mark scheme. Okay, question one. So we have some graphs across here. They're graphs of resistance against current. Just know that typically the shapes that are taught in class are for voltage against current, so we're expecting some differences. Which is the correct graph for a filament lamp? Okay, well, it's not going to be A because the resistance of a filament lamp changes with the temperature and hence with the current. The higher current means a higher temperature. So B is actually the correct answer and this is because the resistance increases with temperature and increases hence with the current. But if the current is zero the lamp will still have some amount of resistance across here. That's why the answer is B and not C. Okay, question two. So block X has a mass which is mx and a density which is given by rho x. Block Y, on the other hand, has mass my and density rho y. Block X is made from the same material as block Y. So this means they're going to have the same density. Block Y is twice as big in each dimension as block X. Which line of the table is correct? Well, they're going to have the same density, first of all, because they're made from the same material. So the correct answer will either be A, B, or C. Now, because each dimension is twice as big, this means that the material will become twice, uh, will have twice the mass, three separate times, i.e. we need to multiply by two, three times, like so, and two times two is four times two, which is eight. So the correct answer is C, M, Y is eight times M, X. Okay, question three, consider the smaller block labeled X from question two. So just this one across here. Standing on its smallest face, it exerts a pressure P1 on the ground. Standing on its largest face, it exerts a pressure P2 two on the ground. What is the ratio of P1 to P2? Okay, so the smallest phase will exert pressure P1. So this means that P1 will be equal to the weight of the block divided by the area. Now the smallest phase is going to be given by 4 centimeters by two centimeters. So that's going to be the weight over four by, by two, which is going to be eight centimeters uh, squared. So we can just write this down as the pressure is the weight over eight centimeters squared. Now, P2, on the other hand, will be the same weight, but now the um, the largest face is going to be 4 by 6, so that's going to be 24, like so. So the ratio P1 to P2, this is just a division sign because the, the, um, the, the ratio sign actually just means a division sign. So P1 divided by P2 will be equal to, now P1 is W over 8 and dividing by P2, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the inverse, which is going to be 24 divided by W. And uh, the W's are going to be cancelled and what we're going to be left with is 24 four over eight, which is three. Therefore, the correct answer is A, three to one. So question four is a challenging question. I could only solve it using some A-level equations. If you spot an easier way of solving this, please let me know. I'll be very curious to hear this in a comment. Okay, well, the critical angle is defined as the sine of the critical angle. Let's call it, well, actually, it's given in here. So sine of 
48 degrees is defined as 1 over the refractive index of the glass being n. Therefore, n will be equal to 1 over sine of 48. So this will be 1 over, let's put this into a calculator, 48. Um, that's around 1.34 five six okay now to figure out the angle of refraction we need to use Snell's law so we're gonna say that n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine of theta 2 so n1 is the refractive index of glass which is just 1.3 three four five six n2 is the refractive index of air that is defined to be just one in 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 physics and we know that theta one is going to be 40 degrees so we know that 1.3456 multiplied by sine of uh, theta 1 is 40 degrees will be equal to n2 which is just 1 which we're not going to write multiplied by sine of theta 2 this theta 2 really is the angle that's given as r so i'm going to write this down across here okay well theta 2 or the angle of refraction will just be equal to the inverse sine of 1.3456 sine of 40 and if we put this into a calculator we're going to get just under 60 degrees so the correct answer is d Question 5. In 1971, during the Apollo 15, a hammer and a feather were dropped from a height of 1.7 meters and they hit the ground at the same time. Now on Earth, though, we have a hammer dropped from a 1.7 meters takes about 0.6 seconds to hit the ground. Given that the acceleration due to gravity of the moon is much lower, it's around 1.6, calculate the time taken for the hammer and the feather to fall on the lunar surface. Okay, so we're going to start off with v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Remember though, because v is equal to u plus a t, uh, where does that equation come from? Acceleration is change in speed, v minus u is final take away initial speed divided by the time and there's no initial speed and we can say that the acceleration is equal to v over t or another way of saying this is that v is equal to a times t so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this equation and i'm going to plug this in here so what we're going to get is a squared times t squared is equal to there's no initial speed, so that will just be 2as. We can cancel out one of the a's, and what we're left with is that t squared will be equal to 2s over a. And now let's square root that expression as well, and let's plug in some numbers. So it's going to be 2 times uh, the height is 1.7 meters, and the acceleration on the moon, uh, on the moon is 1.6. Putting that in a calculator, we can get 1.46 seconds, so correct answer is C. Question 6. Whilst performing the experiment in question 5, the astronauts on the Apollo 15 mission created the work of Galileo Galilei and his investigation the motion of objects. He showed the following. That was a very important result. He showed that objects in the same gravitational field all fall with the same acceleration. So correct answer is E. Seven, when measuring and paying for domestic electricity, the amount used is usually measured in kilowatts hours. The kilowatt hour is a unit of, the answer is 
energy. If you're wondering why, um, remember that power is defined as the amount of energy divided by the amount of time. And what we can do is rearrange for the energy, which is power times time. So power is measured in kilowatts and time is measured in hours. Therefore, the kilowatt hour is the unit of energy. Question eight, we have a crude method to measure the speed of sounds involves banging two wooden blocks together to produce a sharp sound. So one person does this and second uses a trundle wheel or tape measure to stand 100 meters away. When the second person sees the blocks hit, they start a stopwatch, but when they hear the bang, they stop the stopwatch. So we have this method with a value of 420 meters per second was measured. The accepted value is 350. 40 meters per second. The most likely reason for the difference is now I'm going to go with that the distance measurement is too small. If the distance measurement is too small, the speed speed of sound is quite large and uh, because of that it will be hard to make an accurate measurement. So I'm going to go for C. Question 9. In 2014, the highest free fall jump was made from a height of just over 41 kilometers. As the jumper traveled back towards Earth, he reached a terminal velocity of uh, 1,300 kilometers per hour. Exciting. So, continuous force towards the ground through the atmosphere uh, becomes thicker on his descent and before he released the his parachute, his terminal velocity. So on his descent and before he released his parachute, what happened to his terminal velocity? Well, if the drag force keeps increasing as he's falling through the atmosphere, the terminal velocity will become smaller and smaller. So it peaks at 1,300 and then is going to go down and down. If you do a normal skydive uh, from 5,000 meters or so, the terminal speed of things is around 120 miles an hour. So that's substantially lower. So the correct answer is C. Question 10. As he ascended to jump the height and balloon, the Free fall jumper in question nine needed to use compressed air to be able to breathe. The pressure in these gas cylinders changed during the flight as the free faller jumper used the air. The gas in the cylinders became cold due to the height. The cylinders got slightly smaller as they contracted due to the cold. The pressure in the cylinders reduced because of. That's a really interesting question. So let's um, have a look at them individually. The free fall jumper used the air. That will definitely decrease the pressure because it will literally be taking molecules of air out and that's going to reduce the amount of force in the container. So one will be included. Two, the gas in the cylinders became cold due to the height. Yep, that's the case. So if you have a cylinder and one way to reduce the pressure just to reduce the number of molecules by breathing them in. But additionally, if they're cold, they vibrate less. So that's also true. The cylinder got slightly smaller as they contracted due to cold. Well, if the cylinder became slightly smaller, that actually would have increased by some sort of negligible amount the pressure. So this is uh, not going to contribute to that at all. So one and two only, uh, which means the correct answer is B. Okay, folks, hopefully this was very, very useful. Have a look at this video next that will go through some more multiple choice questions to ensure that you guys get the maximum grade.